Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode 15, Tuesday Night Rotor Talk Live. How's everybody doing? Hope you everybody had a great Tuesday today. I did. I uh, woke up and it was 77 degrees and 84% humidity at a little after 7 a.m. this morning. 84% humidity. So <laughs> there we go. Give me a second here. I'm going to get uh, do just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, today is actually a very special day for me. It is my youngest son, Peter's 24th birthday. It's, it's his golden birthday. He turned 24 on the 24th. So, um, happy birthday to my son. Um, I really wish he would have been lived down here in, in Florida. So unfortunately that's not the case. So, um, Chris, Jose, David, Samuel, welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. Uh, let me get the chat popped out. Floyd, welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. Drone shots. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Peter, Peter's. If you see ever stop, if you ever, if you're friends with me on Facebook, and you have a chance to see, everybody has told me that Peter is a spitting image of me. So I and I, and I keep telling everybody that's my handsome son. And I have a 34 year old son too. He doesn't like that too much. But anyway <laughs> thank you guys thomas welcome chris welcome yeah that was uh that was pretty funny just wish he was down here so we could have celebrated it but uh enjoy the weekend my daughter came down over my birthday weekend that was fantastic steve carpenter how are you this evening um got a little housekeeping we want to talk about first just a couple of things the state of the channel video it was really well received i want to thank everybody for for tuning in and watching that. That was really kind of a, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna do those kind of videos once a quarter. It's not really a channel update, it's a state of the channel. And I just wanted to go, Pete Carroll, welcome from Australia. Thank you for joining. Lloyd, welcome. Rick, welcome to the show. Hope you're feeling better. Glad to see you here. Um, it, it's more, it was more of a synopsis of what the channel, where what we've done and where we're headed and i really thought it came out well i've gotten some great comments about it thank you guys for watching that um you know again those are the kind of videos you know i'm not looking to get thousands of views from those videos i'm putting that out there just to let people know who come into the channel you know what what the, what they can expect when they come to the channel and the great variety of things that are on here and i really liked it i really thought that came out so very well i i was just really 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 pleased um steve we are going to be talking about some of the faa kind of stuff that's on the agenda for tonight i'm glad you and thank you steve for posting out to all the facebook my facebook groups about that um the second thing is thank you so much on the user on the user submitted video thank you guys for watching that um you guys hit home runs you knocked it out of the park thank you so much I did have a copyright issue on one of the soundtracks. Um, YouTube has a way now of being able to delete that soundtrack, so it did it, and the video's back out there. It's up and running. Um, and what I'm gonna do in the future, just to let you know, uh, Joan Shots, welcome. 120 down under, welcome. Thank you for showing, th thank, thank you for coming, coming this evening, appreciate that. Um, in the future, for user submitted videos, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to put put on a generic, or I'm going to put on from Adobe Premiere. They have uh, uh, copyright-free music to be able to use, and it works real well. Dronaholic, welcome. Thank you for joining today. They have copyright-free music to use on Adobe Premiere, and it works real well. Todd Henderson, thank you for joining. Um, so I'm I'm really pleased with that. I, I really 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 like that. Um, uh, th that video was just absolutely positively fantastic. I want to want to thank you guys so much for that. Um, the first thing that I wanted to, wanted to talk about tonight was, uh, I don't know how many of you heard, but Card Cardasso, welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was DJI finally came out with a firmware update for the Spark. Okay. Rodney, welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. My videos, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, they came out with an update for the Spark. Now, this is something that it has been like forever. It was, it was. I don't, I don't call it measuring it in DJI time. I call it measuring it in Autel Robotics time because I was one of those that was painfully aware of how long it took to get the update out for the XStar Premium. 
it did take a while. The main focus of that firmware update was the OTG. And from what I hear, that's gone on, that's, that's working very well. So, um, and also I wanted to let you guys know too, I have a Spark group. If you guys have, in, in almost all my um, descriptions for all my videos, list all my groups, and I have a Spark group. That Spark group just passed a thousand members the other day. And I started that from scratch a year ago when I got my Spark. I was the first member, <laughs> that was it. And it's grown from there. So um, that's fantastic. And if you guys are a part of it, great. If you wanna be a part of it, please join. Uh, just, it's it's fantastic. And people really share in those groups and, they're, and they share very well. Um, you know, we're, we're real good about trying to get spam taken care of in that group. And there's not really, to be honest, there's not a lot of that out there. So, um, so yeah, that's a good, that's a good group in that spark updates out there too. So be sure to look out for that. If you guys have sparks, um, it's been working perfect on old firmware, you know, Cardass. So, you know, if, if it works, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. My dad always used to tell me that. Okay. So, um, wanted to talk about something and if you'll indulge me for just a second here i'm going to read this from a uh, word doc so bear with me here for a second please i'd like to address what was talked about last night regarding the overlapping live streams from last week the notion that i was trying to police the internet is off base my whole point in doing this was so that viewers wouldn't have to choose which live stream to watch that's it I fail to see why anyone would be upset over not forcing viewers to watch one live stream or another. Mel stated, I thought we were a community. And I agree, I thought we were. A drone community is there for one another to build one another up. They're there to encourage each other, support each other, and give suggestions and ideas on how to improve, not in a critical manner, not to gang up on, bully, or form alliances. And they're there to serve the drone community. I believe I'm doing just that. I believe my response to the overlapping live streams was serving the drone community. I publicly promote other channels on both my live streams and videos. I actively participate in other live streams. I comment on other drone reviewers videos on a daily basis. And I answer a number of emails and messages each day from viewers and subscribers. Why do I do this? Simply to serve the drone community. In closing, I didn't want you to have to choose which one of us you should watch. I value each and every one of my viewers and subscribers. Thank you for giving me a moment and indulging me with that. So let's move on to the content here. Um, one of the first things I wanted to talk about was um, Joan DJ put, an, put out an article and I thought it was the best and the most succinct. Um, thank you 120 down under, I appreciate that. Um, and, and by the way, let me stop and say, say this i want to thank each and every one of you david marcus welcome thank you for joining tonight um i want to thank each and every one of my subscribers and viewers um this channel would be absolutely zero without you guys um you know and i know a lot of you watch other channels and that's why um i was so passionate about what i just what i just talked about so again thank you all so much and thank you for your support and thank you for supporting everyone in the drone community rodney thank you so much i appreciate that joaquin welcome thank you for joining tonight um the first thing we're going to talk about these are two things that i thought were so important i really kind of wanted to lead the show off with now the first thing is um regarding uh, the faa and national airspace and it's chris hope thank you thank you i appreciate that um I'm gonna read the part of this article from Joan DJ from Hey Kestelou. I thought it was important enough to do this. Uh, to clear up any misunderstanding there may be around local and federal drone regulations, the FAA issued a statement explaining exactly where things stand. State and local authorities may determine the takeoff and landing areas for drones, but only the FAA has the authority to control a national airspace. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the full statement from the FAA in its entirety. Congress has provided the FAA with exclusive authority to regulate aviation safety, the efficiency of the navigable airspace and air traffic control, among other things. State and local governments are not permitted to regulate any type of aircraft operations, such as flight paths or altitudes or the navigable airspace. However, these powers are not the same as regulation of aircraft landing sites, which involves local, local control of land and zoning. 
Laws traditionally related to state and local police power, including land use, zoning, privacy, and law enforcement operations, generally are not subject to federal regulation. Cities and municipalities are not permitted to have their own rules or regulations governing the operation of aircraft. However, as indicated, they may generally determine the location of aircraft landing sites through their land use powers. And in closing, so even though the state and local authorities can determine takeoff and landing areas for drones, the FAA remains the only authority that controls the national airspace. The agency did mention in their statement that the U.S. Department of Transportation's Immigration Pilot Program will provide the FAA with insight on how best to involve local jurisdictions in the integration of UAS into the airspace in a way that also alleviates their concerns as they're looking to the future. Um, thank you for bearing with me while I read this. Um, I thought it was important enough, and I, and I know for, um, you know, like Rodney, Thomas, and some of your other ones that are over in the United Kingdom and, and 120 down under in Australia, you know, these don't necessarily apply to you. Um, but I wanted to make sure, you know, um, I think it's important enough that if the United, usually what happens when the United States takes a stand and takes a lead on something, other countries will follow suit. And that's why I thought it was important enough because um, for my friends, you know, outside the United States here and subscribers and viewers, you know, this could affect you guys as well too. So that's why I went ahead and read that statement. Now, um, you know, I firmly believe, you know, this is, you know, they're trying to get some clarification and wrap their, wrap their hands around this. It's just, a, it's just a mess. I mean, you know, uh, it, drones have exploded oh, since, you know, 2013, 2014. It's just gone astronomical, you know, and the number of people who have purchased drones, you know, are, you know, it's just off the charts. And now, um, you know, getting, you know, part 107s are going up, you know, um, increase in our hobby is, is, is exponential and, and it's getting more and more and more and more. Um, but yeah, yeah, Thomas. Yeah, I, I I believe they probably are, and I believe they probably copy them from the from the FAA. Uh, Australia is fairly much the same. Okay, our local national parks are no launch and land without permits. Yeah, see, um, um, sea breeze. You know, we can't even fly. We can't fly or take off or land in any national parks and things like, um, for example, the Golden Gate Bridge. You may have seen a picture on Drone DJ the other day on. Uh, that was a drone over the Golden Gate Bridge, which is a national park. You really can't do that. Um, Steve, yes, please do. Um, um, Steve did post a letter regarding this on all my drone sites. And, um, you know, Steve, if you can put that on Build a Drone Reviewer Facebook page and group tops. And thank you for doing that on the other groups. I think this is an important enough of an issue that I wanted to lead with this because, you know, this is going to, this is something that's going to affect all of us. Um, you know, the, the local municipalities, you know, I know, for example, um, yes, yeah, 120, you're right. The rules will be adjusted as more idiots break the current law. You're so right. I mean, there are so many, I mean, we saw that that plane that took off the other day, um, you know, off that island. And, you, I mean, they were within, you know, I don't know how many hundred feet of that plane. You got to see a real, you got to see the plane take off. I mean, you shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. And, you know, we need to, we need to, you know, yeah, they need to crack down on people like that. And this is going to lead to my second article that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But, you know, overall, you know, I know, for example, you know, not so much in Tampa. And in Tampa, what's really kind of interesting is, um, or in the state of Florida, for example, because I'm most familiar with that, you can take off next to a, next to a state park and fly over it. You just can't take off in the state park, Okay. That I do know. Yeah, new drone laws, Rodney, new drone laws coming here, Bill, soon have been a few places and notices been put up saying no drone flying. They were not up a few weeks ago. Yeah, you know, it, see, that that kind of that kind of thing's coming. And, um, you know, that that's why, and, and one of the things, I'm, and I'm going to talk about this here in a second. We're going to get, we're going to get to this other article that I wanted to talk about here. But, um, you know, the, being able to simply just even take off and land now, it's, it's being regulated. And, um, you know, that while that was, that was sort of a win for us, I know, for example, over in Orlando, Florida, which is about an hour from me. Um, and I know my friend Ian Jones, um, from the UK who we had the opportunity to meet, um, you know, he was over there. Um, they're very restrictive on where you can take off and land. In fact, there's a couple of groups that I'm, a, a members of 
in Central Florida where um, they have to go. There's Valerie. I hope you guys, everybody say hi to Valerie. She just walked by. Um, there she is again. Hi, everyone. Valerie hi. said hi, everybody. And she's going to give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> is he blushing yeah i am blushing <laughs> she takes great care of me guys trust me she's she, she's more than fantastic so um do you think we'll see an lte option on the mavic pro 2 that's a good question david and i'm going to talk about the mavic pro 2 here in just a little bit but that's a good question um bring that make sure you bring that up again here here in a few minutes um, I knew you guys would like that. Lloyd, uh, yeah, I am too. <laughs> she got me on that one. I had no idea that was coming. <laughs> get a hotel room, yeah. <laughs> In my own house, I'll get a hotel room, Steve. That's great. I like that. Okay. So the point is, you know, we're talking about being able to where you can take off and land from. Um, you know, that's something that the city and, and state municipalities can do. And, and here in Florida, you know, I know in the Tampa area, it's not real restrictive as far as flying is concerned. You know, and one of the big things is, you know, you got to respect the no fly zones. You know, if you're within five miles of an airport, you know, it doesn't happen. You know, for example, um, where I work, I work about, um, I work about an hour from, from where I live and there's a good airport out there. I mean, it's a, it's a smaller size airport, but it's pretty good size. For a large part of that that area, that municipality, you know, you can't fly around there because, you know, it encompasses that five mile radius around the airport. And unfortunately, there's also a lot of small landing strips around there, too, because agriculture is bigger, big here in Florida. And even with some of these other strips, they consider them no fly zones. So um, crazy as it may sound. So, you know, um, there's a lot of that going on. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and shift the topic a little bit. And I know and I want to thank. You know, one of the persons that brought all this to my attention is Steve Carpenter. Steve, thank you so much for that. And thank you for posting those articles. I really appreciate that. So um, now this is this is regarding um, how many of you heard and this again here, um, you know, for my um, subscribers and, and viewers in the UK and Australia and in other other ones. This is regarding um, an FAA type of issue right now. But I thought it would be relevant for you guys, too, because, again, you know, this is coming to everybody. Um, the um, um, the AM, the Academy of Model Aeronautics um, responds to a plea for repeal of Section 336. Now, I'm going to read part of this to you. I'm not going to read all of this to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure. It, yes, well, it's a lot of helicopters. Yeah, you're, you're right, Steve. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll put links in the description for both of these articles because I thought – they're important enough um, that you guys will definitely want to peruse them. Now, this one, this one is good because it's actually from the, uh, the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And let me stop here before I even read this. I strongly encourage you guys here in the States, if you haven't, become a member of the Academy of Model Aeronautics. It's $75 for a year. Um, you get access to be able to go to uh, groups in your area. You can become a member. I'm planning on becoming a member. There's a place that's but less than two miles from my house. Dues are pretty expensive. It's about 125, but they welcome UA, UAV pilots. Okay, they, you know, I thought at first, you know, I pinged them there on Facebook, and they said, "Sure, absolutely, you can fly." You know, we have an area set aside where you guys can fly, and it's like several acres over there. They have a paved runway for the for the model planes over there, but they welcome. Um, they welcome UAS UAV pilots, which is fantastic. So, um, and for that $75, you know, you get a whole host of benefits with that. Um, you do get uh, personal liability insurance, but that's for when you're flying on their property. So, and they do have other options available for that. So, uh, have you checked to see if there's any name registrations for the new Mavic Pro? David, no, I haven't. I haven't checked on that recently. Um, you know, every time I've gone out there, it's just been, uh, the ones from 2016 and the uh, Mavic Pro Platinum. So no, that's a good that's a good thing. I think I'm gonna gonna try to get out there. I know so I know one of my subscribers and viewers have had um, has gotten an alert set up on Google that if something comes out that they'll get notified about that. So but we're gonna talk about the Mavic Pro here in in just a few minutes too. Um, I wanted to read part of this article to you. It's called AMA response to plea for repeal of Section 336. Um, and I'm going to read the quote from AMA. 
AMA's number one priority is the safety of our nation's skies. Through Section 336, AMA safely manages 200,000 members, as the organization has done for more than 80 years, freeing up scarce FAA resources to advance commercial drone regulations and other priorities. Um, at the same time, AMA lends its safety expertise to the broader drone community through efforts as such know before you fly. Even with AMA managing a portion of the recreational community and funding broader educational efforts, the FAA is still under-resourced to handle the growing surge in commercial drones, Part 107 waiver requests and future rulemakings. Eliminating Section 336 will exacerbate the demand on the agency's resources, which may have implications for the commercial drone industry and the safety of our skies. Public-private partnerships with experienced community-based organizations like AMA, which are facilitated by Section 336, can be helpful in alleviating strain on the FAA and enhanced safety. And I'm going to let you guys read the rest of that article. Um, yes, well, guess who is on? Cat777123. Say hello to Valerie, everybody. Um, okay. One of the things, like I said, the first thing I str strongly suggest for those of you here in the States, get your checkbook out, get your debit card out, get your credit card out, and become a member of the AMA. They are there. They not only fight for model airplane pilots, they fight for SUAS pilots. They fight for us and our hobby. So I strongly encourage you to spend that $75. It was fantastic. And the benefits that you get, it's a lot more than what I just stated. So um, definitely you want to check them out. And, and I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage that. There, and I don't get a kickback from that. There's no affiliate link. It's just, it's just something I would just like you need to get drone insurance. That's something that you should have in your wallet is your AMA card. The second thing is this, you need to contact and, you know, uh, your local, um, co local congressman or congresswoman and let them know about this, that you do not want this, do not want section 336 repealed because if that happens, it's going to just, it, it, it's going to, it's going to create unbelievable chaos. And the whole reason that there's friction around this, and I know Steve knows about this, is that the commercial drone industry and companies, let's say, for instance, our wonderful Amazon, you know, and UPS and others, they want to start up commercial drone delivery. And they're vying for the same space that we fly in. And this is putting the pressure on Congress to go ahead and repeal this 336, Section 336. So my best advice to everybody um, <laughs> JB Jones, I'm sorry. Um, we're, we started at eight. I'm sorry. Um, last week was, was an abnormality starting at the time that we did at seven 30. So, um, I implore you to get a hold of your congressman, call their office up, send them an email, do what you can and tell them you do not want section three, three, six, um, repeal. That's so thank you. Seabreeze. I appreciate that. Um, you know, and it's important, you know, I, I know you guys are from Australia and I know that, you know, my, my, my friends and subscribers and, and viewers from the UK as well, guys, M3 Aerial Perspectives, welcome to the show tonight. How are you, my friend? Thank you for joining. Um, you, we, 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 we want to be in one accord on this. Uh, we need to be in one accord um, regarding this section 336. So, so do do that. I mean, I, it's, you know, I, I don't often contact my local representatives on things or my or my you know congressmen or senators. But on, on an issue like this, I think it's important enough to do that. I th Sky Pilot, welcome. Um, thank you for joining today. I think it's important enough to contact your your congressman and let them know this. And and also too, you know, it wouldn't hurt to contact your your senator as well, you're, you're one of your, you know, your states that your U.S. senators, um, because this is, this is important enough, you know, the groups are trying to come in, um, and, you know, the commercial side of things is try, are trying to come in, and they're trying to dictate, dictate things to us, and, and, you know, we, you know, we enjoy this as a hobby, and I, we don't want that taken away, so that's why I strongly encourage you guys to do that, definitely, um, Yes, I am, Mel. I've been a member for um, going on my second year. Um, paid, dude, paid member. 
Um, and I'm also going to be joining a local club here as well. So, um, yeah, flying my drone responsibly. You do, Rodney. Um, so, you know, that's that's where that's at. I'm going to put links in the description. Mel, welcome to the show. Um, I'm going to put links in this in the description for you guys to check out these articles. But I strongly encourage you to read these articles, and I really strongly encourage you to get a hold of your elected rep congressman, congressperson, congresswoman, senator, and, and let them know about this because th this is something that's really important to all of us, um, I, I, which I, I absolutely, positively, firmly believe that. That's just that's just overriding. I mean, I, I can't I can't say enough about that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch gears here a little bit. I know we've been talking about some of that other stuff. Um, you know, I want to thank you guys for um, for your great comments um, on the Mavic 2 videos. Um, you know, I've been getting a, a lot of views on them, and I've been getting a lot of comments on them. And I got a lot of comments on my conspiracy theory one, and I just wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about that. I actually had somebody, why did you use JFK's assassination with that? You know, why did I bring that up? Well, I think that that's where the term conspiracy theory first got started. It, it, you never really heard it until then. And of course, you know, I don't have to educate you on all the hundreds of videos and documentaries and books and articles and everything about conspiracy theories about JFK's assassination. You know, that's a, that's kind of a given. And, you know, there have been an unbelievable amount of, of, of things that have floated out there regarding the Mavic Pro 2. Um, you know, and I don't have, um, somebody had asked me, you know, and, and I got, and I got several emails this week. If I've been asked if I have any idea when this is going to happen, I would say the longer that we go to the end of July, I would think we would be looking at September. Um, yes, I am Mel. I am a member of the AMA. I've been a member of the AMA for two years. Um, so that's something that, you know, again, um, you know, as, as far, as far as that's concerned, you know, I wanted to make sure that, um, you guys knew that there was just, there was a lot out there. There's a lot of people floating a lot of things about this. And, um, you know, my, you know, the, the one thing that I'm thinking now, because we haven't really heard anything and I, I'm, I was thinking sometime this week, we were going to hear something about a new date for that. And I haven't heard anything regarding a new date um, for the for, for the See the Bigger Picture event. And right now I'm thinking, you know, DJI tends to try to do things at least three weeks out. That's what they did with the See the Bigger Picture here. So, you know, right now, three weeks out, that's going to put it middle to almost later July. Um, uh, <laughs> Steve Carpenter. Yeah, I like that. That's a that that's a good one. Um, middle to middle to late August. I'm sorry. And at this point, you know, I would say if it goes any longer and if it goes to the end of July and they still haven't done that, um, you know, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to say September. And what's ironic about that, and I think I mentioned that in my conspiracy theories video, is that the Mavic Pro originally came out in September 2016. I mean, it's it's a it's a big irony. I know that's what uh, that's exactly what that's exactly what I'm thinking. So that's where that's at. And I also saw, and I had some other people email me. Um, from um, and asked me if I saw this on a DJI forum, and I wanted to wanted to bring this out, but bring this up. One of the things that they had heard, and they found this on a DJI forum, and I went and I looked at it. Um, you know, they're saying that, and again, this is just this is just rumors, speculation that there's going to be obviously two different models of the Mavic Pro, and one of them is going to have a Hasselblad camera option on it. That's what that's what I heard today. Um, just to kind of let you guys know that that was something brand new. I hadn't heard that or seen that. And of course, you know, I go out there and I and I scour everything. Could FAA certification? Um, it could be either FAA can or it could be the FCC. There could be something, um, you know, regarding the regarding the remote control because 
as you know, anything that's from a remote control device has to get approved by the FCC before before it's um, uh, before it's it can be sold here in the United States. So, um, you know, that's you know th that's one of the distinct possibilities it could be. You know, and at this point, and like I said, and I mentioned this, I think on the last Rotor Talk Live. Um, Colin, welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. Appreciate that. Um, you know, no worries. You can always catch up on, on, on what you missed. Um, you know, my thinking is, you know, re regarding, regarding this, what I'm thinking about that is, you know, there's just been a lot of stuff and a lot of talk that's going on and, you know, who's going to, are we ever going to really know the exact truth of what went on? Maybe, maybe not, but you know what? That's all going to dis. What I'm going to tell you is this guys, Samuel. Hello. It's good. To I'm glad, glad you're with us tonight. It's going to disappear when they present, when they come out on whatever date and they present the product and it's sitting out there and it's a, and you're, you're able to look at it. It's all going to disappear. Rick, I'm so glad you're getting better. And, and I, and I, and I thank you for your address and I am going to get something. I have a care package. I'm going to get, get out to Rick and I know, and I know you like it, Rick. So, but you know, you know, I firmly believe, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to worry about all these conspiracy theories. We're not going to worry about things. We're going to have the product and we're going to see the product. And I'm going to tell you what, I believe that this is a product that's going to knock everybody's socks off, that it's going to be, you can't take my money fast enough kind of product. And, you know, you know, could DJ have done a better job? Well, yeah, but we don't know. We don't know what's controlling all this. We have no idea. You know, there's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, tariffs, FCC, FAA, you know, regulations. Who knows? You know, product. They said it was a production issue. Who knows? Who really knows at this point? But like I said, when that product comes out and you can get online to be able to order it, you're going to say production issue, uh, uh, you know, vendor supply issue. Uh, you're not going to remember any of that. You're going to be you're going to be looking at your order confirmation number and your tracking number from FedEx to when it comes into your comes comes to your door. That's what you're going to be looking for. And you're going to be ready to grab it, get it charged up, update the firmware if you have to, and get the propellers on it and, and, and get it outside. I mean, that's where we're at. Bill, you're repeating rhetoric from other talking heads that have no clue or facts. Mel, I'm just presenting this to everybody so everybody has the opportunity to hear this. A lot of people don't hear that, and that's why they come to Tuesday Night Rotor Talk Live to be able to hear that. So that's why, so that's why I'm stating that. Um, you know, so I'm excited and I'm, I'm excited that it's going to, it's real, it's going to happen. Um, I did see there was been a couple more, um, a couple more reviews on the Parrot and Afi. Um, will early adopters be beta testers? Um, Ken, um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing probably so. Now, what I've heard about the parent, you know, I've seen some, I don't know if you guys, I, there, there's been some more reviews on the parent and Afi, and, and it's been looking a lot better from what some of these latest reviews from what, I, from what I've seen. And I've seen some video footage from that as well. I know um, Rick Smith from Joan Valley, um, he put out some great video footage from uh, his time with taking the parent and Afi up. And um, I think Everyday Dad did as well too. And uh, got some got some footage out there. So um, definitely, I suggest you guys check out some of these videos. I do have a Parrot and Afi group that I'm running. It's it's kind of small right now, but it is growing. And you know, I'm thinking that's a drone definitely not to be ignored. One of the things that I wish Parrot would have done is, you know, I think that price point's a little high for that drone. Um, you know, for the size and so forth. And also, you know, the batteries are a hundred dollars. That's expensive. Uh, you know, you can get Mavic Pro batteries for what, eighty dollars, seventy-five, eighty dollars. Yeah. Um, 
drone shots. Yes, drone shots. Send that to me um, to build a drone reviewer at gmail.com, and I will definitely look at that. Parent off, he stopped DJI on their tracks, even canceled. Um, Hawkboy, you, you could be right. That, that, could, that could be one of the things. We don't know. We don't know. But I think the Anafi has gotten a lot of attention, which is good. And the thing that I the thing that I have been saying is that getting uh, getting the parent Anafi to succeed and also getting the Autel Evo to succeed, I think are critical. I think they're crucial um, to help push DJI to put out to put out a better product to, to give us to give us better product here. I, you know, I, I think that's so important right now. We can't we can't overlook that. And you know, I'm, I'm hearing some other things with um, you know, one of the things that I've heard recently about the Evo is it will land smoothly when you use their Autel's version of return to home. But if you're manually landing it, it's very wobbly from what I understand. So um, I think Captain Drone, Steve, I think he put out a video on that. I think he talked about that. Um, so, you know, well, they got the horizon tilt issue fixed, and that's something I give Autel a lot of credit for. You know, when they had the XStar Premium, they were very slow in doing their software updates, but with the Autel Evo, they've been responding a lot more quickly. So I think that's fantastic. And, um, you know, the footage I'm seeing from the Autel Evo has just been incredible. It's just been absolutely incredible footage. And like I said, <laughs> when the Mavic 2, Mavic Pro 2 comes out, I think it's going to blow it away. I really do. Um, Samuel, yeah, well, you know, Samuel, the Inspire 2, you know, I know Billy Kyle just got one, and it's a fantastic drone, and I think he's going about things the right way. Um, you know, um, you know, I shared with him, I'm friends, and I'm going to try to get him on the show. Um, I'm one of my subscribers, he's, he's from California, and he used to work for a major um, sports network. And he did aerial photography for them um, from a blimp. And he also, right now, he currently does aerial photography from a helicopter. He has his helicopter pilot's license. And he just, he's getting it in the process of getting his part 107. And, um, you know, he's been asking me about drones. Had a Skype call with him. Fantastic. I think I'm going to try to get him on one of our Tuesday Night Road to Talk Lives. He knows an incredible amount of detail. He actually told me, He's waiting for when they come out with an Inspire 3. Now he did tell me he did tell me a couple things about the Inspire 2. And one of the things is, and I and this is great, and I got a and I and I complimented Billy and I told him, I said, you know, you're doing you're going about this the right way. You're learning how to fly the Inspire 2 first. And then once you get that down, you go ahead and you learn how to operate the camera system. Because really and, and truly, if you're if you're using this. Um, you know, a lot of times you need two people with that. It's just, it's just that way. And, you know, and I know when, um, I, I know Mel mentioned that, you know, even flying the Inspire one, um, you know, it does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of concentration. It does take a lot of effort. It's not like flying, um, you know, Mavic pro or Phantom four pro it's very different and it's extremely responsive. I remember Mel told me, you know, pinches on the sticks and you have to be real gentle with your movements because it responds very, very quickly. And again, Mel, thank you for that opportunity for flying your Inspire 1 V2. That was tremendous. Absolutely, positively tremendous. I really enjoyed that. Um, so, you know, I wish Billy well with that, I, you know, and, and, and I think he's going to do it right. He's going to take his time with that because that's the only way to really truly learn how to fly that. And that's what my my um, subscriber friend out in California has told me, and I'm hopeful of getting him on the show because I think he provides such an incredible perspective on aerial photography. So, you know, like I talked to him for over an hour one Saturday, a couple of months back, and uh, extremely, extremely knowledgeable, um, just incredible wealth of information regarding aerial photography. I think you guys would really enjoy him. So I'm going to try to get him on. You know, I know he lives out, you know, his time zone. I may do a Sunday afternoon with him. But if he's available for a Tuesday evening, I think think we'll definitely get him on. Yeah, it's just it's just he's just absolutely fantastic. You know, I absolutely have have had nothing but great conversations with him. I've really, really, really enjoyed him. Um, that's all that I have for this evening. Does anybody have any questions tonight? I'm gonna go ahead and op open it up to you guys.
you know, I wonder if the 535 will be the new buzzwords. Five mile distance and 35 minute flight time for the new Mavic Pro 2. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, I wonder too, David. That's a good, that's a good question. That really is. Yeah, <laughs> easy to fly drone shots if Billy can get it out of travel mode. Yep. Um, Thomas, I don't think I'd spend a thousand on it if hotel still have issues even after the update. Rodney Parker, I, I'd be prefer to spend the 1K on the on the air fly more. Um, you know, that's possibly true. Yes, Bill, when's the um, DJI Mavic Pro 2 coming out? LOL. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's roll the dice, Steve. <laughs> let's just do, you know, the pin the tail on the donkey and have a calendar up there. I mean, that's that's pretty much where we're at with that. You know, that's, you know, that, that's that's where we're at. Um, and Ocetalab has been quiet the past few days, too. Haven't seen anything. Ken, maybe DJI was trying to rush the Mavic 2 out after the Evo and Anafi came out so they wouldn't lose market share. If the Evo and Autel received lukewarm reviews, they decided no need to rush. Can you, that may be possible. That that really may be possible. You know, I'm thinking we may know exactly what's going on. Um, which used to refurbish DJI is the best. Um, um, John, um, it depends upon what you're trying to, if you want something that's portable, you probably want to look at something like maybe a Mavic Pro or a Mavic Air. Um, if you need, want to get great photography, you're not worried about portability, possibly, you know, Phantom 4 Pro. Um, it depends on, you know, there's a number of fact things you need to factor in. Bill, when you own an Inspire, that would be a good time to talk like you know all about it. Well, Mel, you know, um, my friend out in California does know an awful lot about it. And I did have a great conversation with him. So that's where I got a lot of that information from. I'm, I'm basing basing that on, on, on what he has told me. Um, I think it looks like November for the Mavic Pro 2. It could be, David. I, I, I don't know at this point. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm definitely thinking if they come out with a Phantom 5 this year, I think that that's where we're going to go for that. Um, yeah, Mavic Air with OcuSync, Droneaholic, I agree. That sounds fantastic. Drone shots. Um, Thomas, love the Mavic Air, works out of the box. It does, Rodney. It's a great, it's a great piece of machinery. A loud, but great piece of machinery. Um, Want to thank everybody for joining tonight. Appreciate all your excellent participation. It's been fantastic. Um, no Sunday afternoon Rotor Talk Live. It's it's the off week for that. Um, but I have a couple more videos coming out. Um, and if you guys have a chance to um, check out Ronald Lockwood. Um, he goes by Ron. Um, he works um, as a um, you know, on a medical helicopter, and he he put together a nice video on that. And I know he's also put one. He's also one of the user submitted videos. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, any other companies besides DJI releasing drones this year? Ken. Um, well, Unique just um, introduced their Typhoon H Plus, and the only I haven't really talked about that, but I think I'm going to take a look at that. And I think we're going to talk about that a little more. I think I'm going to see if I can ping Steve, Captain Drone, and maybe see if we can get him on. Because I know he has an older Typhoon H. And I think that would be good because I think a lot of people would like to find out about that. So, um, Lloyd, everybody, thank you all so much for, for joining us today. Um, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a couple more videos coming out this week for sure. Um, Steve, thank you so much. I appreciate all your hard work for the channel and all your comments. Um, it's been great. Um, Al, thank you for, thank you for showing up. We're kind of wrapping things up here. So, um, and, and again, if you have any questions after the show, um, please go ahead and email me at build a drone reviewer at gmail.com. I will be more than happy to try to answer your questions for you. You guys have been absolutely super. I really appreciate that. Um, it's fantastic. Mel, if you want to email me, I'll be happy to respond to that. Everybody, thank you so much for all your great participation and comments. I appreciate that. Have a great rest of your evening. And remember, happy flying to all. Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of wrapping things up here. So kind of kind of, kind of end, end in the show. So um, I have retrieved my Evo from a peanut field. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Take care.